for the next speaker. Yeah. I would like to introduce them because I'm so delighted to introduce our next piece, uh, speaker. That is Professor Zing Yang. Uh, I know that all of you know him, but I would uh, like to introduce uh, him and uh, read a few sentences. Uh, Professor Zi Yang uh, is the head of bioinstrumentation department and medical imaging lab, uh, School of uh, Biomedical Engineering at uh, Capital Medical University. He is also vice president of China Medical Informatics Association. His research interests include imaging physics, medical image analysis, and image guided surgical robotics. He has published a number of scientific research papers and hold multiple international patents. He served as a reviewer for several research journals and international conferences, including uh, medical physics, IEEE TIP and IEEE TMI and many others. His important research developments include the low dose CT reconstruction technique known as AIDR3D with Google Scholar over of 1,500 uh, search results, also an image-guided intervention technique known as 3D roadmap. So Professor Ziyang, uh, floor is yours, and we are so excited to uh, attend your presentation, which is titled Diagnosis Imaging for the Hospital of the Future. Okay, thank you, Amanda, for the introduction. Uh, I will start my uh, presentation. And the topic is diagnostic imaging for the uh, future, for the hospital of the future. Actually, this topic was uh, uh, Catherine uh, uh, assigned the topic. It's a great uh, topic. I appreciate that. Uh, now, let's see. Uh, for the future, uh, the hospital of the future, we really uh, hope to uh, predict what's, what can be in the future. But uh, from now, we, we go to the future, we want to see the uh, hospitals. We really want to uh, see what is the driving force to make the, uh, the technology or the, or the service become a kind of uh, future hospital and how the medical uh, imaging or diagnostic imaging can be uh, played an uh, important role in the future hospital. Uh, actually, this afternoon, we have the uh, other professor Professor Mao to give a talk. He said, when you talk about uh, the future hospitals, uh, we really talk about the uh, future patients and the future uh, doctors and future nurses uh, and all the uh, around future, uh, the components of the future hospital. So uh, to make this, uh, uh, to, to predict the pre uh, future uh, uh, what going on in the future? We have to see uh, what is the driving force. It is the people's uh, uh, people uh, now. The living condition is uh, uh, generally improved, so people live better, uh, and uh, uh, our population uh, in the world, in many countries uh, actually, uh, in average, are getting aging. So we need uh, more health care in the elderly. Uh, another thing is uh, the post-pandemic uh, awake. We have a kind of, uh, in the, before the pandemic, uh, we, uh, we have our regular uh, traditional and uh, regular pace of the technology innovation. But uh, in the pandemic uh, uh, situation, especially in recent, uh, several, several months, uh, people are in urgency to develop uh, technologies and drugs, uh, medicines, and uh, uh, and uh, 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 all kinds of things to deal with the uh, post-pandemic. Uh, so the, the, in this period, there are a booming of the ideas and uh, uh, and. Uh, methods to, to, uh, to improve the health care and avoid the uh, uh, more infection. So uh, this is a, a driving force. Another is uh, the technology innovations. Uh, this can be a, 
uh, another driving force to to let us uh, to go to the future and uh, real, realize the future hospital. So uh, for the future hospital, uh, we from the, at this point we can have some wish list. Maybe when we arrive there, uh, the wish list can uh, maybe uh, different or uh, some can be. Uh, we can probably we look back. We, it can be revised, should be revised. But from now, from my point of view, uh, for the diagnostic imaging, uh, uh, for the uh, hospital future, uh, that means we want to uh, see how the diagnostic imaging uh, evolves, develops, that meets the people's uh, uh, increased. Uh, demands in the healthcare uh, situation. So uh, for the imaging, first we want to see uh, better. We want to uh, use the imaging, doesn't matter CT, MRI, or uh, other modalities like uh, ultrasound uh, PET. We want to see better. Uh, we want to have uh, high quality uh, images. We have, want to have spec spectrum rich uh, images. Uh, for spectrum rich, this is uh, uh, generally we use the in CT imaging area. We have dual, dual energy CT or multi energy CT, like photo counting CT, like spectrum. But in spectrum here, I would like to refer it to uh, multi modalities. It can be a, uh, in another uh, view, it's a kind of spectrum rich and also functionally rich. We want to uh, see many things that we uh, currently we don't see if we can uh, uh, enrich the, the functions. Uh, in the past, like an MRI, we uh, developed the basic MRI and we developed the DWI, D, uh, developed DTI and uh, also functional MRI procedures, so we want to have more functions, uh, not only for the regular uh, general uh, imaging modalities, as I mentioned before just now, also some uh, like uh, optical imaging method that is good for eyes, for eye, uh, fundus examination, for the maybe skin uh, examination, so we want to see better and also want to experience, uh, have better experience. So patients have better experience and the doctors also uh, have better uh, experience. Uh, like uh, uh, orthopedic doctors, when they perform uh, surgeries, sometimes they have to other, uh, you know, they have to take some uh, radiation doses because they have to stay in the room when the CRM taken, uh, projections, take images. So we want to have better experience uh, for the doctors and for the patients, they feel, feel better. That is that is a great uh, part. Uh, and also enhance the uh, workflow. Uh, another thing is we want to achieve more. So uh, in this conference, we have this talk about uh, uh, man, a lot of about data, that uh, how we uh, that get data, how we share the data, how we uh, make standards to uh, communicate with data and uh, start from the data we have the, uh, we, we can uh, apply the AI to extract the data to predict, uh, uh, predict uh, things and uh, classify uh, uh, pre-screen uh, uh, um, disease. Uh, so the data and the, uh, we want to achieve more better uh, st st standardize the data and we want to have AI to be more uh, intelligent to, to do more precise the work we want to do. And uh, so of course, to do that, we need better analytical power to uh, fulfill the, uh, the work task. And uh, also by that, we can get more uh, accurate uh, diagnosis. 
uh, currently some uh, modalities may uh, have uh, some like specificity and uh, uh, sensitivities. Those can be uh, both increased, improved if in the future imaging technologies, if we have better technologies. So people are you know, working on that. I am one of the person to work in the uh, imaging, uh, uh, medical imaging, diagnostic imaging uh, technology development. Uh, for us uh, to, to go to the, to from now, from the current stand to uh, arrive uh, future, uh, the imaging modalities or imaging technologies in the future hospital, uh, there uh, should be a, a path of the technology innovation. We need to go through that. Uh, but uh, when we look at the future, we can look back how we come to this point. Uh, we, we have like, a, uh, uh, we not, not only to support the technology innovation, we, uh, we will build the hardware. We need uh, a better machines to do the job. Uh, so now in the uh, some we see some products or research uh, um, prototypes. Uh, this is like full full body uh, pad. Uh, before we do the pad like this uh, type, it it uh, the bed need to move, and the, the signal to noise ratio is. Uh, uh, it has some limited signal to noise ratio. And uh, also uh, the dose patient needed to uh, get more uh, radiation like uh, uh, radiation medicine inside to get more, they receive more dose. But if we have more detectors like full body, uh, they can reduce dose dramatically. As I read the article for this, uh, it can reduce like 44 uh, folds of the uh, doses. That means the patient get less uh, radiation uh, injected. So it's a, a kind of uh, development from the past and to now we have the, this kind of development. And uh, also like CT, uh, CT machines, uh, first generation, second, second generation, and third generation is fourth generation. Uh, in current uh, hospitals, we see the most, not most, oh, I think 100% of the C CT scanners are the third generation scanners like this. Uh, we have uh, like different companies from GE, Siemens, and Toshiba, Philips, and all these kind of companies, they are now it's not Toshiba, it's Canon. So they produce a uh, different level of the CTs. Uh, people think the fourth generation CT is uh, uh, not uh, it's not feasible in the uh, earlier time, but in uh, North uh, uh, Radiology uh, Society of North America conference, uh, in 2018, I went to there. This is my. I took the picture. They actually uh, there's a new startup in Beijing. Uh, they build this uh, fourth generation CT. If this really can uh, uh, realize that uh, they can make this machine, uh, they doesn't use this kind of rotational uh, source and the detector. The detector is static, and the source is an electronic beam they can make the uh, acquisition really fast, much faster than the third generation. They can uh, uh, shoot the images of the heart like uh, uh, very quickly. So they can freeze the moment, uh, movement of the heart. The motion of the heart won't be a problem. So uh, we really hope this uh, can, be, uh, uh, can be realized. Uh, wait for this. Uh, the, good news from this uh, startup company. And this is uh, the uh, CT machine build. We have many, uh, we have different prototypes like, uh, or modalities like uh, MRI also has its own development uh, uh, path. 
for the uh, that's for the machine side. Uh, with a good machine, we need, uh, like we discussed earlier, we need uh, also good brains, good algorithms, and a good uh, uh, good intelligence to to achieve make the machine to achieve better uh, better outcome. With the same machine and uh, use low dose. Uh, low dose image, low dose acquisition, acquisitions. Uh, if we use uh, uh, previous uh, technologies, we get a, a CT image like this. And by enhancement of the uh, using the physics and the mathematics, we uh, improve the, the intelligence of the algorithm and uh, exploit the capability of the machine, we really can uh, get a much better outcome. With a low dose, we can reduce patients' uh, risk for the, uh, for the uh, radiation. And these are the comparison. And now the, uh, we, uh, we, also, uh, we also have the uh, AI drive the uh, image reconstructions uh, previously, it's an iterative reconstruction. Now it's AI reconstruction. The intelligence of the machine is uh, improved. So this is the path we will project to the uh, future. And uh, uh, to also can improve the uh, workflow and the knowledge uh, of the uh, medical practice. So we start from data we acquire some raw data or some basic uh, data, first-hand uh, data, and we apply CDs. We can have uh, AI to drive the CDs. Uh, we can uh, pro fulfill the screening. Uh, if we have some discoveries, we can have some medical procedures. And with the procedure, we want to see the outcomes and then follow up. With this, uh, 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 Pass. We can uh, improve the, improve the whole process uh, to apply uh, to make it uh, like hope in the future uh, hospital the medical imaging uh, diagnostic imaging can uh, optimize all the processes by improve the models uh, based on the outcome and the uh, initial model or initial method. We improve model and we also uh, refine the standards. This is uh, what we uh, hope to, to get. Uh, and we hope this, uh, uh, we can see this from the uh, uh, future. Actually, we are working on this now. Everybody, all the uh, researchers uh, we discussed. So our past and the current stand is the lens to the future. So I just uh, look at the, uh, just the, we just uh, review the, the, what we have done in the imaging technology and uh, we uh, try to uh, see from that to see the future. Uh, that's the thing. And uh, for, for my, uh, for my research, research lab, I would like to take this chance to, in, to introduce some of the work uh, in my uh, research, research lab. Is, do I have the time? How many minutes? Okay, let me go, go, go on. So uh, my lab, uh, we have some uh, several projects uh, going on. One project is uh, uh, interactive has planning for biopsy in the tumor, uh, the liver tumor uh, ablation. So this is a, uh, we need, a, we have a project that uh, to uh, find the path and define the region, uh, avoid the uh, critical organs to uh, do the right biopsy and also uh, ablation. So this is a kind of, uh, uh, project is going on here. We collaborated with uh, uh, certain hospital. And uh, uh, also we have an, a project that is uh, uh, actually Dr. Dahi, uh, 
showed this machine yesterday. I, here is my uh, one of the collaborators. We uh, try to uh, develop a kind of AI based uh, uh, a spatical uh, path, uh, a particle path planning um, strategy. So we are working on that. Uh, doctors don't need to look at the uh, projections and uh, uh, talk to the engineers to adjust the uh, the path and get the right path. We can have some AI based uh, technologies to give the automatically set the path. And also we have some other pediat uh, p orthopedic uh, projects that we work on the um, the uh, ankle uh, fibular uh, more rotation detection and uh, uh, during the sur surgical time. So uh, doctors can adjust the more rotation accordingly. The technology we use is uh, 2D image and the 3D image registration. This is uh, also an ongoing project. Uh, another project is uh, uh, to cl classify uh, the liver uh, uh, liver, uh, let's say fibrosis uh, uh, grade degree of the uh, liver and also inflammation degree of the liver. So we have we try to develop uh, the uh, uh, neural network strategy to uh, to get the uh, the classification uh, work. So this is also an ongoing project. Uh, Let's see, we don't need to go through so much details. And uh, uh, this is, uh, we use the ultrasound image to do the classification. Uh, usually ultrasound, uh, doctors look at the ultrasound images. Uh, they have kind of call, uh, uh, they, they can tell the, uh, how serious, but they don't have uh, accurate uh, this description or the, uh, or the tell the degree, the, the grade of the, uh, the problem. So like uh, fibrosis and the steatosis, uh, how, how serious they don't have quantitative uh, outcome. So we want to match with the, uh, uh, the biopsy result and develop a kind of neural network can directly give the, uh, uh, give the degrees from the images, ultrasound images that way we can uh, reduce the patient and, uh, infections and, and also cost and uh, uh, unnecessary biopsies. Uh, another pr pr project we work on is uh, to develop, uh, uh, we collaborated with uh, uh, Chin Chinese China Academy of Science and also uh, a famous eye doctor, eye, uh, uh, I, uh, I mean the, the, the hospital for the eyes. Uh, they uh, we work on a project that is a developed method, AI method to uh, detect the uh, detect the, the uh, diabetic retinopathy uh, de uh, development. So based on the uh, targeted. Uh, Imaging fluorescent target uh, imaging. So uh, the result, the current result, is very promising. Last week we uh, just uh, uh, sent in a paper to uh, to a very good journal. So I hope this is uh, uh, we can get a very good outcome. Uh, these are the uh, some good uh, no some projects we are working on. Uh, by hopefully, hopefully by all these developments, we I can we can uh, we can uh, do some put some uh, contributions to the uh, diagnostic uh, imaging for the hospital future. That's uh, uh, my uh, uh, team, my research team and research lab. Okay, uh, I finished my talk. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
this summit and have a speech. Today, I'm... hi everyone, it's my pleasure to participate in this summit and have a speech. Today, I will introduce some work on my team with the title Practice of Mining Electronic Health Records. Electronic health records of a patient is a repository of information about his or her health status. There are different types of data within EHRs. We have medication, laboratory, imaging, and narrative text. Among all these different types of healthcare data, the clinical notes, which are written by physicians as they are documenting the clinical process, including their thinking process, patient making process, the evidence they found, how they did the differential diagnosis, and the treatment plan for those patients. Because many of these notes are unstructured thick text, it is very difficult for analysis and then extract information from. So in this speech, I will talk a little bit about it. When dealing with clinical notes, we will face several challenges. The first is the availability. How to get this EHR data? It is still an unsolved problem. Who is the owner of this clinical data? Who has the right to use this data? Patients, hospitals, or government? And there is no standard to process this data before they could be ready for use. The second is complexity. The clinical notes could be very, very long, especially for inpatients. What's more, there are many, many abbreviations. Some are in English, some of them are even in Latin. It is not obvious for us to think about how to go extracting the clinical meaning. Another issue is there are both structured and unstructured data existing in clinical notes. Besides the unstructured free text, we also have tabular data, which doesn't have structure, and it's really hard for natural language processing system to understand them. The third one is quality. Clinical notes should be manually enter the text, therefore it's time consuming and they need a lot of efforts. The real situation cannot be certified, information missing, typos, and another source of many errors in copy and paste, which is not a good approach but widely exist. The so last but not least important is interoperability. There are many different EHR systems currently are used in different hospitals. It remains a huge challenge to enable the transfer of information among different EHR systems. Meanwhile, the diversity of data formats, mm -hmm. different terminology and style bring a lot of troubles for data mining. There are two parts of our work on EHRs extracting information from EHRs and the full application of tasks to make use of this information. The first step to utilize EHR is data cleansing, which makes them ready for use. Normally, to extract information from narrative text, we should scan all of that text and then find all of clinical entities, such as symptoms, vital signs, laboratory tests, and so on. Then, clinical relation extraction should be conducted to find the relations between these clinical entities, like the attributes of a symptom, such as degree, time of duration, and so on. As we have mentioned, our clinical notes may come from many different EHR systems. Therefore, we should map these name entities into the ontology, or in another word, medical concepts. In this way, we extract most of the clinical information from EHR data, and at the same time, after normalization step, we have almost the same style, no matter where these clinical nodes come from. Most of this work are based on natural language processing technologies. This is a follow chart. We need lots of data with their labels. We should define different NLP tasks and train many different models, and the performance is quite well. For most of the tests, the record accuracy is more than 90%. Here is an example. For a sentence from an ultrasound report, we name entity recognition and the clinical relation extraction. We can output a graph like that, which describes the structure information of the sentence. The clinical data comes in lots of different formats. Sometimes they are PDF files. Then we need to think about how to do the OCR. If the PDF file is a laboratory report, which has tabular data and contains structure, it could be more difficult to extract information. Although OCR is an old topic, 
and there are many tools you can find. But for laboratory report PDF files, it is still a big challenge. Multilingual, mix of diagrams and text, various type setting styles, complex systematic relation. So the tools you can find cannot achieve satisfied performance. If you want to develop a specific tool with machine learning technologies, you may find the lacking of data and labels. Moreover, field target studies can provide full help. We put some efforts on this topic, and let's see what we have done. Here are the example. The performance is quite good, and to those samples similar with training data, we can say perfect. However, we are still not sure about its robustness, because it may encounter different star data, which could be more difficult cases. With all the information extracted from clinical nodes, in theory, we can do more things with the help of artificial intelligence. Intelligent medicine comes to be a very hot research area. Computer-aided diagnosis is one of the important direction. In sampling deep learning model and rule-based model together, the diagnosis tool we developed now can cover more than 600 diseases. And for the accuracy, top one is about 85%, and top five candidates can cover 93%. To achieve this computer aided diagnosis, we propose a new graph based test classification framework, Tensor GCN. In this framework, semantic based, syntactic based, and the sequential based test graphs are firstly constructed to form a test graph tensor. The graph tensor is used to capture test information with semantic context, syntactic context, and the sequential context, respectively. The tensor GCN learning process includes two parts. The first is intra graph propagation learning from the input graph tensor. The second is inter graph propagation learning with using the output of the intra graph propagation as its input. These two parts work iteratively. It works quite well and achieved the performance shown in the last slide. This model was introduced in GVI 2020. Another important topic is DRGS. DRGS refers to diagnosis related groups. It divides patients into 500 to 600 diagnosis related groups according to their age, gender, length of stay in hospital, clinical diagnosis, illness, surgery, severity of disease, complications, and outcome. And then the grouping results are applied to de describe how much compensation should be given to the hospital. China has begun a trial to use DRGS. Therefore, DRGS will play an important role in the cost and the quality of healthcare in the near future. Disease coding is a basic task of DRGS. In China, many different versions of ICD-10 are currently used in different hospitals. For ICD-10, there are more than 33,000 codes. It's a huge number. Therefore, for some patients, to assign the most accurate code is time-consuming and need special knowledge and experience. It should be a spot that AI technologies can provide help. So we develop a tool to achieve Well, this was a very interesting presentation. I just would like to inform the audience that Q&A session will be at the end of this framework. For the ICD coding task, the framework can effectively incorporate clinical information from EHRs and these wise knowledge from experts with light computational complexity. Our proposed framework can support large-scale ICD coding with high accuracy, so it can be applied in real applications. What we have in EHRs, we can find the physician thinking process, physician making process, the evidence for the differential diagnosis, and the treatment plan. Therefore, EHR quality is actually related to the healthcare quality tightly. So the goal of EHR quality control is about how to improve EHRs. Actually, there is a huge difference between UHR's data of different hospitals and still far from satisfied. Typical problem, such as content missing, written errors, copy-paste tests, diagnosis accuracy, and so on. 
We are working very hard on developing a system which can conduct quality inspection for EHRs and find out all of our problems. Some of them are about the form, such as the length of cheese complaint, history of illness, typing errors. Meanwhile, some of the problems are about the logical or clinical meaning, such as diagnosing issues, context consistency. Some of them are quite easy. Some of them based on lemmatic recognition, relation extraction, and also some of them quite knowledge inference, such as knowledge graph and the reasoning algorithm on it. The information which can be mined from clinical notes may have more usage. We have two more tasks here. The first one is about ultrasound report generation. An example of ultrasound report is shown in the finger. The first part of the content is ultrasound image, where the dots save key multiple images for subsequent analysis during the examination. The second part of the content is ultrasound report that dot gives based on the images, which includes native and diagnostic description. It costs a lot of time and energy of radiologists to analyze the ultrasound image and write the report. It is obvious that the report generating task is much more difficult than age detection and attributes classification. If the report generation can go to real application, it will be a great help to relieve the pressure of radiologist shortage. To achieve this goal, we can first mine the framework and the templates from large number of reports we have. On the other hand, we can get clinical information with image analysis. We can generate reports based on the framework, templates, and the clinical information. Our first try is to generate ultrasound reports automatically, and we do have made some progress. Based on the mining of ultrasound reports, we can get information which should derive from Im image analysis that help us define multiple tasks of image analysis. After that, we can generate reports from the information list. For some simple cases, the results seem okay. However, we should do more work to cope with the complicated situation. The second way is about national medical licensing examination. In China, passing this examination is a necessary step to be adopted. We developed a system to participate in this examination in August 2017, together with more than half a million examining. The passing line is 360 out of 600. Our system made 456 which significantly exceeds the passing line. Moreover, this score outperformed 96.3% examining, which is some kind of out of expectation. We have set up a two-stage framework, including reading phase and learning phase. Reading phase is to get knowledge representation from many kinds of text with free reading and guided reading. Free reading means learning model without any label like word embedding model, while in guided reading, we use labels, information, in fine-tuning to improve the embedding model. Reading phase try to make inference based on knowledge. We have collected and print with facts and graph. We build a three-level ensemble framework, which is made up of key point reading, context reading, and the global dynamics reading to conduct reading, coping with different situations from simple to complicated. The test center who organized the national medical licensing examination conduct analysis on the performance of our system for different cognitive levels and for different question types. Our system are all outperformed than human examining. In subject of the examination, there are four categories, preclinical medicine, clinical medicine, medical communities, preventive medicine, only for the medical communities questions. Our system underperforming examining slightly. The reason is the questions about the medical communities can be answered with common sense, which is difficult for the system. It is also a big challenge to artificial technologies today because common sense is difficult to define and there is nowhere to, for system to learn common sense. After that, we develop a general AI-aided diagnosing system, which has been applied in primary Healthcare agency from 2019. So, I have shown you what we have done with clinical notes. I think the clinical data is very important, and there are still many possibilities <clears throat> and a great 
potential to make more use of them. And this work will significantly improve the healthcare quality, which is important to our people and society. That's all for my speech. Thank you. Uh, well, this poster is related to nationally uh, funded research project, which is aimed on the analysis of the use of artificial intelligence for creation of person-centered care services for stroke rehabilitation. Next one, please. Well, uh, person-centered care is one of, I can say, recent uh, approaches, especially in this part of Europe. Uh, related to improving the quality of care and in the same time uh, decreasing the expenses of uh, health care. Uh, even there are so many evidences how to, uh, about benefits of implementing that kind of a services. Um, there are no unique approaches how to develop this kind of services for, for specific uh, care. Uh, they are also closely related to characteristics of each healthcare system. So in this project, since it is funded by the Ministry of Science of Montenegro, we were focused on the stroke rehabilitation process because as a partner of this project, we have Clinical Center of Montenegro and their neurology department. Well, related to general recommend recommendations related to stroke patients, um, we need to include uh, cooperation with their relatives uh, with uh, family members, with their friends, also with patients, and include all these elements and all these actors, I can say, in a uh, joint decision-making system. Also, we, have, we can get our data from different resources uh, and uh, different external devices, uh, smartphones, smartwatches, and all other things. So uh, we needed to design the appropriate services uh, and to enhance the stroke rehabilitation process, even during their stay in hospital and also after that when they are uh, left home and where, when they have a rehabilitation process. Next one, please. Person sent okay, uh, the methodological framework, but the, uh, what we decided to apply uh, since we are fully aware that there are a lot of different AI methods and techniques, and uh, many of them have promising potentials to be applied for this domain, we decided firstly to apply to create a domain specific knowledge representation, actually to um, uh, integrate different semantic, uh, semantic uh, uh, models to represent them, also to include different representatives and roles, and to apply some of algorithms, existing algorithms uh, to support decision making. And also on the another side, we needed to explore which exact kind of AI techniques can be used for um, mining over all these collective data because the key and challenging issue were about was about medical data coming from different sources. Next one, please. The methodological. Okay. Uh, well, uh, since uh, as you can see, uh, we are almost on the second year of implementation of this project. Uh, we made um, uh, progress. Uh, we decided to apply model-driven approach, which allow us to um, implement at the same time variability and commonality in the whole uh, model, and to test um, uh, how uh, this model can be used. Uh, we also received a database for experimental research from our clinical center. Well, this, um, we, we have close to 1,000 of records, but just to... Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, some of you are not aware, uh, but Montenegro is a very, very small European country and um, the whole population of the whole country is less than 1 million. So this number um, is uh, pretty, I can say, satisfactory and pretty big for this uh, clinical center. Next one, please. This project is... Uh, well, uh, our result is already presented in the form of a research paper, which was presented this June in Athens um, at conference, but we resulted with this kind of a model. When we also use feature model, which is on the top of this uh, uh, figure, and it, re it represents um, variability and commonality aspects, and also the, uh, it matches a business process model, which 
uh, present the process of a stroke rehabilitation. Next one, please. Uh, this model. Okay, uh, this preliminary results after one year of uh, research show that um, we can expect uh, good results, which can uh, present uh, different uh, characteristics of stroke patients in our country. And what is the most important, we show that this kind of a model can be adapted to specific characteristics of a population and also of a healthcare system. Our suggestions for uh, potential cooperation and uh, collaboration with Chinese colleagues um, include the following. First of all, uh, sharing experience about uh, using different AI, AI methods and application in a medicine. And also during previous session, I really heard a lot of uh, potentially linked uh, research results and uh, topics related to our research. Also, we are so interested if we can use different funding channels to create some uh, study visits and ex exchange of staff members between uh, our two countries. And also we are so uh, interested if we can uh, either continue with our scientific work and also uh, to uh, make the practical use and practical implementation of our results in our hospitals uh, and in other healthcare centers. So thank you very much. This was a short poster presentation and I would be happy to answer all no questions. Well, now I will um, take a role of uh, co-chair of this session and move to our next poster. Uh, that is a poster which is titled uh, European Electronic Health Record Exchange Format Prospects for the Hospital of the Future in XE Health. And this poster uh, will be presented by Diogo Martins from Portugal. Um, graduated in health equipment and technology, academic background consists on electronic ICT and medical devices, holds a MD in um, healthcare information system management, obtained in partnership between the Polytechnic University of uh, Leiria and Faculty of Medicine of Porto, with thesis uh, in e-health field, which is titled Impact of Using Mobile, mobile Handheld Technology in Healthcare Delivery Systematic Review. He has worked as medical devices consultant, key account manager, and ICT project man manager in SPMS, working on healthcare data sharing radiology and decom imaging. Infrastructure for healthcare data sharing, and telemedicine platform. Most recently, he coordinates uh, and actively participates in more than 10 EU projects in the digital health related to patient environment, empowerment, sorry, innovative use of health data, interoperability, and e-health sustainability. He has been able to make a bridge between ICT expertise and how important it is to engage healthcare professionals and citizens to ensure healthcare enhancements. Currently, he works as SPMS uh, and is responsible for the international project as well as uh, international cooperation. Oh, good morning, good afternoon and good evening for everyone. I hope that you can uh, hear me clearly. So thank you so much for the invite to participate uh, in this session today. So I will present briefly um, what it is, uh, the um, XE-Health or Cross-E-Health, uh, that is an European fun uh, funded project by the European Commission about the exchanging of the electronic health records in a common uh, uh, framework. So. Uh, in terms of the, 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 the background, uh, sorry about it, just uh, in terms of the, the introduction of the project, uh, there is three main pillars that are very important to keep in mind when we talk about this sharing of health data across border. Um, the Cross Health project intends to contribute on the digital single market strategy and the sharing of health information between the different member states uh, at the Cross the European Union and really implement a common uh, sectorial approach in a common format uh, of exchanging health data in really to increase a better access in terms of consumers and business to business in online goods and of course uh, digital healthcare services. This uh, will 
lay down the foundation for three pillars that are very important for the strategy of the European Commission about the digital single market. It is the citizen secure access, their health data across border. So it is how can I access the health data everywhere when I am the European Union? To have a personalized medicine and uh, individual planet care when I am in uh, EU. And of course, to have the citizen empowerment uh, and the use of digital tools in order to have a preventive uh, um, treatment for uh, the European uh, citizens. So this is the three main um, expected pillars that we strive in this uh, project. Uh, in terms of the relevant trends, um, in the, these upcoming years, we see in uh, a lot of the different markets that artificial intelligence, uh, virtual reality, uh, and uh, the cloud competing and the use of big data are the important assets and are important drivers on how can we make the most of the uh, healthcare data. But if we look on the healthcare market trends, we see as well, very important uptakes and messages that we are that we are going to strive in the next upcoming years, and they will be very important uh, for um, these topics. It will be the, the the precision medicines and genomics. It will be the internet the Internet of Medical Things. It is how can I have medical devices and uh, medical equipments in my own. How can I have the best care delivery in a remote patient care and, of course, the use of telehealth? And we do believe that this type of uh, trends will really foster the individual planned care of each individual uh, across the globe. So in terms of the mainstreaming of these initiatives at the European level, we are going from a path, from a road, from a person, a personalized medicine that will ensure the privacy and the security of the health data in order to be used by each individually by using the portability of health data to have the data, for example, in the smartphones or to be accessible by the different healthcare profession, professionals Although it will be important that this type of information will be accessible by not only by the healthcare professionals, but the citizens, the healthcare, the different healthcare organizations and the policymakers. Two important aspects that are very important when we do this um, cross-border collaboration between the EU countries. It is the exchange of this data at the national, EU and international scene. One of these examples, it is the creation of the International Patient Summary. It is a common data set to share some data uh, in the um, urgent uh, cases. And of course, really the driver uh, at this stage, it will be how can we make the most uh, of the data that we have in our organizations, in our countries, in our institutions for secondary purposes. Really the take here, uh, it, it is really said in the, some previous sessions, it is these uh, three helix, the industry, the healthcare institutions and the research. It is very important that we start working as a common ecosystem. And for that, the project really aims, out, uh, aims down to lay down the foundations on how can we advance the integration uh, of the e-health or digital health services in the different European countries. And for that, it is very important to ensure four main uh, goals. The, the data needs to be in higher quality and to promote the safety of the treatment of the citizen in every uh, country around the EU and for that it is important to allow the citizen to access and to manage the electronic health records to contribute to a standardization and harmonization of digital health services in have different agreements on the levels of interoperability to contribute to the defragmentation of uh, European services and of course the most important that I do believe it is it is the interaction between the patients and the healthcare professionals and the healthcare providers. It is very important to have an important role on prevention and empowerment of the citizen. Any other way around, it is very important that the professionals have the right data and quality data on their disposal to uh, treat the patient. With that, we do have some specific objectives. 
and really to promote the safety and the quality. So this is for you to understand that uh, uh, what I report back to you previously was in these uh, three uh, domains. So what we want to ensure as an impact, there are four impacts that we see that are very important uh, as a project and we would like, let's say, to, to have. It is to ensure the uh, accessibility and the portability of health data across citizen, researchers, healthcare services, and health professionals. How can we enhance and increase the digital literacy of the different professionals and citizens? And of course, how can we integrate the health data into to the um, health ecosystem in order to have a tailoring digital service infrastructure on uh, demand for the different healthcare providers. In the end, what it is our main objective, it will be to have a better and easier uh, access to online tools and applications and digital tools for a safe healthcare delivery. So the project will aim to set down a set of specifications and implementation guides on how can we share these four domains across the EU. Lab results, a subset on the rare diseases, medical images, and a discharge uh, letter. Uh, in terms of conclusion, uh, what we really think that in this collaborative uh, spirit uh, between EU and China, it is very important to bring a strong community outside of the EU that joined cases to build a, a global community of innovation to make a better use of novel technologies such as AI, it is a very important uptake for the next future. It is very important that we start from a collaborative work to promote the use of common models, standards, and ICT tools in order to build a strong community that contributes to the defragmentation of the national and cross-border digital health services and to really to share experience on what works and what doesn't, and perhaps set up a joint case study. This is something that it is really important in terms of how can we make use of the data? How can we make use of common data and common standards in order to really to increment? So the three main messages that I want you for you to let back at home, it is that we need to jointly work on a standardization and harmonization computer literacy and digital inclusion to furnish our citizen and healthcare professionals with the required e-skills and digital uh, competence in order to enhance the medical response to the urgent and planet care with the high quality data. What the project aims, it is really to set down the set of specifications and implementation guide on how can we implement common models, standards for the sharing of the domains on lab results, images, discharge letters, and rare diseases. So, in conclusion, you can follow uh, our project for the next two years that it is composed by um, 34 um, partners uh, among the 22 member states of the EU with uh, almost 100 people collaborating on it. You can always follow on our social media, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. And of course, if you have any question, you can always send me, drop me an email to my uh, professional uh, mailing boss or uh, in the social media in the Twitter. I hope that you can uh, enjoy. If you have any questions, I will uh, answer in the end. Thank you so much. The last one you posted for today. Uh, the poster is titled Natural Language Processing Pipeline of Chinese Free Text Radiology Reports. The presentation will be made by Kung Lei Liu. Uh, she received a PhD degree in Control Science and Technology from Tsinghua University in 2016. She is now a lecturer with School of Biomedical Engineering, Capital Medical University. Her research interests include medical information and medical natural language processing. Um, uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, it's my honor to give a presentation here. Uh, today, my topic is an NLP pipeline of Chinese radiology reports. Uh, here is the background. As we all know, recent years, EMR, which is short for the electronic medical records, uh, are very important resources 
especially for clinical care and support. However, despite the rapid development of NLP, uh, Chinese EMR processing, especially uh, for the radiology reports, remains challenging compared with English EMR processing. Uh, there are two main, there are the main two ch challenges. The first is the limited compass, and the second is the specific grammatical characteristics of Chinese. Uh, therefore, in our work, we want to design an NLP pipeline for the feature extraction for, uh, for the clinical feature uh, from the Chinese radiology reports. Our pipeline could derive the radiology uh, radiological features, uh, which composed of one or more entities. Uh, here are some some examples. Uh, for example, here we could combine liver liver and the low density together to uh, to be a radiological feature. Uh, in name of the entity recognition, that is also NER. Uh, we also used the lexicon into the deep learning model. Uh, with all these radi radiological features, uh, we used these features for the liver cancer di diagnosis. Uh, here is the overview. Here is the overview of our NLP pipeline. Uh, there are mainly three sections in, in the NRP section. Uh, the first is NER, then is the normalization of synonyms. Uh, then with some rules, uh, we could get the radiological features. Uh, here is an example. Uh, this is some sentences from a Chinese radiology reports. For example, for the first uh, sentence, the liver is normal in size and shape. Uh, after the NLP section, after the three steps, uh, we could get uh, for the liver is normal in size and shape. We could get the radiology radiological feature. Yeah, uh, here is feature one: liver normal in size and shape. Uh, with all these features, we could get the feature matrix. Um, this matrix is, is, is sparse. Therefore, we then use the lasso for feature selection uh, and uh, machine learning methods uh, for the liver cancer diagnosis. We choose the four, four, four popular machine learning methods here. Uh, NER is the most important part in our work. Uh, here is uh, the pipeline of NER. Uh, we used the deep learning method by LSTM CRF here. Uh, with, uh, with the normal features, we also uh, added the lexicon feature. Uh, the lexicon, the lexicon uh, was built by ourselves. Uh, we, with, with, this, with this feature, we could get better performance. Uh, here are the results of our work. Uh, the first result is the uh, is 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 for NER. Uh, we can see from this table, uh, NER with the lexicon, uh, the model could get better performance than the model without lexicon. Uh, then we used the features for liver cancer diagnosis, uh, with lasso for feature uh, selection. A uh, random forest could, could get the best performance. Uh, here is the conclusion. Uh, in, in our work, we proposed a deep learning method for the radiological feature extraction based on Chinese radiological reports. This work was a comprehensive NRP study on Chinese, uh, on Chinese EMR. Uh, also, our NLP pipeline proposed here could also be implemented in other kinds of Chinese, co uh, Ch Chinese clinical texts and other uh, diseases. Uh, this work has been published on IEEE uh, Access. Thanks for the following colleagues contributed a lot in this work.
Thanks for your attention. Yang. Yeah, you see my screen? Yes. And uh, Yaoling Yang, uh, who presented the abstract and algorithm for multi viewpoints stitching of surgical field assisted by optical positioning technology. Congratulations, and uh, we wish you wholeheartedly to tell us more about the progress of your work uh, in uh, the next uh, time that we will meet. Uh, the second one was from uh, Ni, yeah, uh, Ni Wang, uh, which uh, presented the work study on the semi supervised learning. Um, uh, based uh, patient similarity from heterogeneous electronic medical records. A problem that for me is, is really at the core of every patient. Uh, you know, what happened to people like me? That's how um, this question is summarized. It's a very big question. And the third one is the, goes to Kan Yi, multi viewpoint optical positioning algorithm based on viewpoint optimization. So, stereo, how we can actually provide uh, uh, physicians uh, with insights uh, through technology. So that's all from uh, the student uh, Eposter Awards. Congratulations to all uh, three of you. Congratulations to all of you. We were inspired by you and uh, we look forward to learn with you.